Hello my sweet friends, welcome back. I'm not gonna lie, I have been watching so many people's full TBR videos or full reading recommendation videos and I have FOMO. I'm a little bit jealous because here in the Southern Hemisphere, our seasons are the opposite. So yeah, it's like 30 degrees outside, the sun is shining and I don't really wanna be reading dark academia reads. So I thought, you know what? Why not film my own little spring slash summer TBR video and recommendations video? So the first part of this video will be me giving you any like spring and summer reading recommendations that I have for those of you who are also in the southern hemisphere or for those of you who are in the northern hemisphere but maybe just want a summary read and then the second part of this video will be my personal TBR for the spring and summer months and I thought it would be fun to get the mic out and just be able to walk around my shelves and kind of show you some of those recommendations so let's jump into it. I've split up my recommendations into kind of like different categories and the first category that I have are beach reads and these are just reads that I could imagine someone sitting by the beach and reading you know like you want something really atmospheric that's just going to give you the perfect summer vibes like the sun is shining and you want to be able to encapsulate that feeling through a book so these are the ones that I have for that little subcategory. The first one is I think off camera and that is 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand. This is actually the only Ellen Hildebrand book that I have read but from what I've heard a lot of her books kind of have the same vibe to them. This one is set on Nantucket and it has a lot of descriptions about the beach and living by the beach and just living in a small kind of beach town and it's just full of like family secrets and family drama and it goes over the course of 28 Summers as you could imagine and it follows a couple who never seem to be able to find the right time to be together but they always reserve one weekend every summer to spend together and so it follows them throughout their lives as their lives go up and down and different things happen but they always have one weekend every summer together and this just felt very nostalgic very atmospheric very summery to me and so if you want something that's more just like general fiction it's not like super romancy or super thrillery or, or a mystery or something but just like general fiction kind of just talks about life this is the book for you. Another book that I feel like just gets the vibes of summer so incredibly perfectly is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book is set in Malibu, shocking, in 1983 and we follow four siblings as they host their famous end of summer party and unfortunately things don't go very well but within this book you get to follow each one of the four siblings and see what kind of difficulties they're going through and what life is looking like for them. They're all kind of going through something and I I feel like you could probably relate to at least one of the characters and, and the struggles that they're going through. I think if you like family dynamics, this is a really great book. But this book, again, just feels like summer. I think just being set in Malibu in the 80s, I wasn't alive in the 80s, but this still gives me that nostalgic feeling. It's just written to be very atmospheric while still being just like genuinely interesting in terms of the plot like I just find all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books so fascinating I feel like she's an incredible writer but this is the one that feels the most summary to me I feel like I can't film this video without recommending anything by Emily Henry you've probably heard the recommendation before and so I don't want to spend too much time on it but Emily Henry just creates the most incredible books they are definitely a mix between romance and literary fiction and they all have a very summary vibe to them I would say I feel like if you want my top top recommendations from her I would say Happy Place and Beach Read and those are both very very summary as well but honestly if you haven't picked up an Emily Henry book pick up any of them because I feel like there's a great chance that you will enjoy it. She is just an incredible writer. She makes me feel like I am there with the characters watching each scene play out in front of me. I feel the weight of the emotion of the characters that she writes about and I just couldn't recommend her enough. I recommend her for any time of the year but especially in summer I think. And lastly for a big Beach read. I would recommend, where is it? This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. Carly Fortune tends to write very summary reads. I've read two out of the three that she has published, but this is by far my favorite and such a top recommendation for me. This book really surprised me with how much I loved it. It was released earlier this year and I just think it is the perfect beach read. This book follows Lucy and Felix and they had a previous summer romance and they still definitely have feelings for each other, but it never really feels like the right 
time. It doesn't really feel like the right situation. So they kind of try to not have feelings for each other, but it just doesn't go very well. They, they can't really seem to stay away from each other. But I feel like this book is so much more than a romance. Lucy is really struggling with just like a lot of things in her life and her best friend is going through a huge crisis that she feels like she needs to be there for. So there's just like a lot going on in this world and in this story. And I personally love a story that has a bit more than a romance. It's not just a romance, but it also has a bit of weight to it, a bit of depth to it. And I feel like this is perfect because it is light and fluffy enough for you to just pick it up and enjoy it on a summer's day by the pool or by the beach. But I feel like it's one of those books that you'll probably think about after you finish it. And the story might stay with you a little bit because it talks about so many other things apart from just having a cute little summer fling. My next category, I like to call the non-thinkers. So these books are ones that you don't have to think about. You don't have to put a lot of effort into because sometimes for me at least, especially in summer when I'm heading to the beach or I'm going on vacation, I want books where I don't have to put any effort in. I don't have to think. So these are books in my opinion that require no effort from you. You can just enjoy the reading experience. First up, I want to suggest Catherine Cowles. She is an author that I've read multiple books from. Specifically, I've read books from two of her different series. The first series is the Tattered and Torn series and the second series is called Sparrow Falls. If you like small town romance, you need to read Catherine Cowles. I honestly feel like she deserves a bit more hype because if you like Elsie Silver or Lucy Score or any other small town romance authors, I think you could enjoy Catherine Cowles. She writes really fun, very fast paced, easy to read small town romances. Like I said, there are two different series that I have personally read from, but she has so many other books as well. Most of them, if not all of them, are on Kindle Unlimited, so we also love to see that. And all of the books I've read from her so far have a romance, but they also have a suspense element to them. I would say if you have read The Edens by Devney Perry, so like Indigo Ridge, Juniper Hill, those books, and enjoyed them, you would love Catherine Cowles because it's a very similar vibe. Romance with a bit of a suspense element, which I just love. It just gives it a little bit more than just a classic romance. And they're all quite short and quite quick. And each series is like an interconnected standalone series. So if you just want to dive into a big series where they're all set in the same world and have all the same side characters, again, I just really can't recommend Catherine Cowles enough. Also, I recently found out that Elsie Silva and Catherine Cowles are besties. So if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know, I don't know what will. I require a step stool for my next suggestion. Okay, my next recommendations are books by Renee Carlino. I've read two, so I can't recommend all of hers, but I definitely recommend both of these ones. We have Swear on This Life and Before We Were Strangers. I feel like Before We Were Strangers is her most like famous, most popular one, but I feel like she just writes books that are incredibly interesting and have such good storylines, but they're also short and quick and just kind of require nothing from you, no effort from you. You can just dive right in, get caught up in the drama of the romance and move on, you know? I feel like Renee Carlino is able to create depth while keeping it fairly short, which... I feel like is pretty rare. Swear on This Life is a very similar vibe to Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. So if you like Love and Other Words, I think you should definitely pick up Swear on This Life if you haven't already. And then Before Your Strangers is set in New York City, I'm pretty sure. And it's like a second chance romance. And again, very atmospheric, maybe not like super summery, not like set at a beach or something like that, but it's quick. It has depth, it has a great romance, and both of these are extremely bingeable, in my opinion. Back up we go. And the last author I wanna recommend in this category is none other than Sarah Adams. I feel like a lot of you already know Sarah Adams. She is such a well-loved author, but for good reason. I recently read The Rule Book and I absolutely loved it. I feel like Sarah Adams is very like cheesy, very silly goofy, very lighthearted, but still manages to have depth, still manages to have a good story, and just like really lovable characters. The Rule book is a second chance romance that follows a football player and his new agent and they actually used to date when they were in college but of course are trying to remain professional now that they work together. I don't have all of my Sarah Adams books with me because I've lent them out to friends. They are one of my like most lent out books to friends because a lot of people tend to enjoy them but this one is Practice Makes Perfect and this one follows When in Rome. I definitely recommend When in Rome. I love it so much. It's like a 300 page romance that I just absolutely adored. Again I binged it in like one day and gave it five stars. And When in Rome and Practice Makes Perfect are part of the same little world and they take place in the same small town. And there's gonna be more books in this world with the other 
members of a family that we follow in the first two books. And to me, Sarah Adams' books are just the epitome of a fun time. So if you just want something fun that's going to make you laugh and smile, I definitely recommend Sarah Adams. The next category I have are more like nostalgic reads. So books that are going to make you think and books that are going to make you feel. So these ones are a bit more like historical fiction or general fiction. And trust me, like that is not my normal genre. I don't read a lot of that genre, but these are books that I think anyone could enjoy. The first one in this category is Tom Lake. This book is about a mother who is sitting down with her three adult daughters, telling them some of the stories of her life and like the things that she got up to in her younger years and kind of like the exciting life that she lived that they don't know about because obviously they weren't there. It's also set in spring, so I feel like it really gives those spring vibes. And this one is particularly interesting because this mother actually dated a famous actor, I think he was, but she fell in love with him before he was famous. And so it's just, a, it's a really interesting story. I listened to this one as an audiobook, which I really recommend because Meryl Streep narrates it, which is absolutely incredible. And just like, I don't know, it's just iconic, really. Another one in that same category is Mary Jane. I feel like this was very popular a couple of years ago. It kind of made its rounds on booktube and just like the book side of the internet in general. But this is another like historical fiction that I just fell in love with. And it was just one of those books where it just feels so all encompassing and so consuming. And I'm not really sure why. I think it just must be the way it's written. It's set in the 1970s in Baltimore and we follow a 14 year old teenage girl called Mary Jane. And she is extremely sheltered. She kind of like lives in this bubble. Her parents are very strict and very conservative. So she has just lived a very sheltered life thus far in her 14 years of living. And one summer she gets a job as like a babysitter or like as a nanny for some kids down the street. And this like babysitting job just exposes her to the world, you know, like to all of this new music and all of the things that are just going on in the world that she didn't even know existed. And she just gets to like experience life for what feels like the first time. And it's just fascinating watching this 14 year old girl who is now kind of old enough to start kind of making her own opinions about things and she's just never experienced like nuance before like to her life was very black and white and for the first time she's experiencing this gray area and figuring out for herself what is right and what is wrong and it's just absolutely fascinating and could not recommend this one enough. And the last one in this category of like nostalgic kind of more historical reads is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. It's just a story about friendship and growing up and where different decisions in life can take you. At its core it just follows two girls as they become friends and what their lives look like as they grow older and continue their friendship. But it is so much more than that. You really see how different decisions can transform your life. You get to see how they make mistakes and they have regrets but also as they chase their dreams as they fall in love and as they try and maintain this friendship through their lives as they get older and experience kind of these hard things and as friendship gets more difficult than it was when you're a teenager attending school together and you get to see each other every day and again it just has that really nostalgic feel to it of like getting older and figuring things out and it's really one of those books that makes you think this made me think so much about my own life and my own friendships and how communication is so important how forgiveness is so important how lives can be different and each person can kind of chase their own dreams in different ways but you can all find happiness in different ways and also maybe how you think other people are happy but maybe they're not and how it's so easy to compare your life to other people even when you don't really know what's going on it's just a really fascinating and insightful read that I think a lot of people would really really enjoy and I feel like it's one of those books where it's like it doesn't sound that crazy but when you start reading it you cannot put it down I lost so much sleep over this book like there were so many nights where I stayed up trying to read it because I just could not put it down which I was not expecting going into this. I have one more recommendations category and that is fantasy because I personally love to read fantasy but I definitely feel like I read a lot more like general fiction and romance in the warmer months and then more fantasy and thrillers and mysteries in the cooler months but if you are a fantasy girl and you want to be reading fantasy in the warmer months like me these are some that I would recommend that aren't like so wintry or or like not like so cozy. In my brain, these are ones that you don't have to like commit as much to. Maybe they're not super long series or super like crazy world building, but they still offer a lot of escapism and just a lot of magic. So let's get started. First of all, I feel like I have to recommend Emily Wilde. This is the second book actually, but I feel like the second book specifically is a bit more like spring summer. The first book is a bit more like wintry in terms of the actual like setting of the book. But I feel like these books, like Emily Wilde, the first book and the second book are very easy to read in summer because 
is they're not super crazy world building or super complex magic systems. It's very much like our normal world, but with fairies. Like it's not super confusing to grasp. You don't have to spend a lot of mental effort on it, which I particularly really like. I feel like they're perfect for all year round because they could be very cozy reads because they are cozy fantasy in the autumn and winter, but I also think they could be perfect for the spring. You really just don't have to take them too seriously, which I absolutely adore. They're very like quirky, I would say. We're following Emily Wilde. In the, in the first book, she is writing her encyclopedia of fairies and doing a bunch of field research for that. And in the second book, she goes on another adventure. So these are just really fun books. There's a third one coming out early next year, which I am so excited about. This is just one of my favorite worlds ever. I know it's not for everyone. Some people don't really like it because it's not very fast paced. It's not super like high stakes. But if you do like cozy fantasy or if you just want something cozy and fun and silly, I really recommend these books. They are definitely a personal favorite for me, hence why they have a dedicated shelf. Another fantasy that I feel like is great for the summer is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I feel like this is a great one for the summer because it is not much to commit to. This is a standalone. It is set in the Cosmia, but you can read it without reading any other Brandon Sanderson novels. You don't have to have any prior experience to his other books. It may be helpful, but I just don't think it's necessary personally. I feel like a lot of people are kind of scared of Brandon Sanderson novels, me included, because they are quite long and they're full of just very complex magic systems and worlds. And there's lots of different series within his worlds and it can be quite confusing. So if you just want something isn't confusing, it's not a lot to commit to, it's not a huge long series, this is just a little standalone. It's another cozy fantasy actually, but majority of this book takes place on a boat, which just kind of gives more of a summer vibe to me. And again, this one is a bit more like silly, goofy, very just like fun funny and quirky to me. I think if you like Emily Wilde, you might like this because it is just a lot of fun. Another book that I want to recommend is The Crimson Moth. I wouldn't say the setting of this one gives like spring, summer. I feel like this one is probably more like autumn vibes, but this is the first book in what will be, I think, a duology. So again, it's not a lot to commit to. It's very fast paced, very easy to understand. It's not super complicated or overwhelming. And again, in my brain for summer, those are the kind of books I'm wanting. I don't want to have to expend a lot of mental energy and this book is one of those ones that you can dive into and just enjoy. This one is YA fantasy and we are following a witch and a witch killer and it is a bit of a enemies to lovers situation and it's also full of tension. I think if you love Powerless by Lauren Roberts and you're looking for something that will give you a similar vibe, this is the one for you. And lastly in this category, if you like the idea of fantasy standalones where there's not a whole lot to commit to, I'd really recommend any Alexandra Christo books. I haven't read her whole backlist, I've only read these two. We have To Kill a Kingdom and Princess of Souls but both of these were so much fun and I definitely want to read more by this author. To Kill a Kingdom is probably like my main recommendation because this is a YA fantasy standalone. It's one and done and it's also inspired by The Little Mermaid. So if you want more of like a mermaid pirate kind of romance, this is the book for you. And I feel like the whole mermaid situation kind of gives me summary vibes, but I feel like I've recommended this one a lot. So I also want to recommend Princess of Souls, which I read a little bit more recently. And this one again is quite like fairy tale-esque. It is a little bit longer, but again, it's still a standalone. And in this one, you are following a princess who kind of holds a bit of a special power and a guy who was trying to overthrow the kingdom starting by killing the princess. At least that is his plan. So again, a really fun kind of fairy tale esque fantasy. But those are all of the like spring slash summer book recommendations I have for you. And now we can move into what's on my personal spring slash summer TBR. I've broken up my little spring slash summer TBR into three different categories. I have a romance category, a fantasy category, and then just like an other category. So starting off with the romance, I have Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. This just screams spring to me. I don't know about you, but like as if I can't read this in spring or summer. I feel like I've talked so much about this book and I haven't even read it yet, but I'm just so excited about it. It's set in New York City and it is a surprise pregnancy trope, which is not a spoiler. It's literally like the first line on the back. And that trope is not usually my favorite, but I would say it's more so not my favorite when they include it as like a point of conflict towards the end of the book, or if they just like chuck it in at the end of a book with no real purpose. But if the whole book is about two characters that didn't mean to be together and then they accidentally get pregnant and then they have to like figure it out. For some reason, 
I ate that up. Another one that obviously just screams summer to me is Elizabeth of East Hampton. As if I can't read this in summer. On the back, this one says a modern retelling of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice set in the Hamptons where classes clash, rumors run wild and love pops up where least expected. Like you can't tell me that doesn't sound so fun. And I, and I also haven't heard anything about this one, which makes me even more excited because I'm going in completely blind. The characters names are Will Darcy and Lizzie Bennet. <laughs> They're really playing into the Pride and Prejudice thing, aren't they? This just sounds like a whole lot of fun and perfect as a bit of a beach read. Two books that I have just been itching to pick up from my TBR are You With A View and The X Vows by Jessica Joyce. I have just heard incredible things about both of these and I just want to read them right now. So even if they were literally set in the dead of winter, I would be reading them in the spring slash summer because I cannot wait. I mean, they don't give winter vibes to me. I think they're a bit more maybe summery. I'm not exactly sure. On the back of you with a view, it says, two former high school enemies must reunite for a road trip inspired by their grandparents' broken engagement in this electric debut romance. I remember when I first heard about this book, it was like starting to get hype and the premise of it, like the story of it just like didn't sound that fascinating to me, but this has such incredible reviews that I'm like, I don't care. I don't care if it doesn't sound that good to me. I need to read this book. And I feel like a lot of the time when I'm explaining one of my favorite books to someone, I'll be like, this is what it's about. I know it doesn't sound that interesting, but it's so much better than that. You just have to give it a go. So that's what I'm hoping with this one. It doesn't sound like the most fascinating thing in the world, but I think I'll enjoy it. And then I think I'm even more excited about the X vows because I've had a few people tell me that it kind of gives happy place energy by Emily Henry. Cause I think it's about two X's based on the X vows. And I know there's a wedding involved. A strange exes must stick close together to save their best friend's wedding after a string of disasters in this swoony and steamy second chance romance. I think it'll be fun. And I also really want to get to The Match and The Enemy by Sarah Adams. I love Sarah Adams and these ones are from her backlist but they recently got traditionally published and they're just really like short and fun little rom-coms I think. I actually don't know much about it. Again, I'm going in a little bit more blind but I just really love Sarah Adams writing. I feel like she just writes really cheesy, silly group romances and I've enjoyed everything that I've picked up from her so I want to continue to read her backlist. My guess is that I won't enjoy these ones as much as I've enjoyed her like more recent books but I'm hoping that these will prove me wrong. Either way I feel like these are great for like by the pool or by the beach. Very quick and easy, not a lot of effort which I've mentioned earlier I think is perfect for the summer. And then I have a few that I don't have the physical copy of but the first one is The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. I've heard so many people raving about this one and the premise of it just sounds so much fun. I'm pretty sure it's about two people who were married but only were married for like a logistical reason and were never like actually married, like actually in love. But now they have to pretend that they are actually married, I think because the guy's family, something to do with that. But it just sounds like a really fun summary read. The cover is definitely giving summer. I also want to read Love of My Afterlife. Again, this is one that I don't know that much about, but I've heard amazing reviews recently and the cover of it just looks really fun. I think it's about a girl who meets her soulmate in the afterlife, but then comes back to life and has to find him. Something along those lines. Again, sounds absolutely bizarre. I barely know anything about it, but I've heard great reviews. It sounds like a lot of fun. A bit of a silly, goofy time, but also with some depth, question mark. And lastly, I really want to read Nora Goes Off Script. I've read one book by this author and absolutely loved it. It was a 4.5 star read for me. It was Summer Romance, which again, I definitely add to your recommendations list if you haven't read that one yet. I feel like it really popped off over the past few months and for good reason it was an incredible read and because of that I'd love to slowly make my way through this author's backlist. So the next one on my list is Nora Goes Off Script. I feel like all of her books seem to give me kind of like summary vibes but Nora Goes Off Script is the next one I want to get to. Moving on to the fantasy books that I'm hoping to get to in the spring slash summer. The first one is Akane, Akane by Lynette Noni. I have read a bunch of books by Lynette Noni and I've enjoyed them all but none of them have been absolute standouts but my friend Freya raves about this series and the way that she talks about it it makes me feel like this could be a series that I get really attached to and it's a little bit of a longer series and I have been craving a longer fantasy series that I 
can just like really dive into, get super attached to. And the first book at least is set at a magical school and that just sounds literally incredible. Honestly, I kind of have high expectations for this and I'm hoping that this will just be one of those worlds that I can really just completely escape into and just feel completely consumed by. Another book that showed up on my doorstep recently because it got traditionally published is Spark of the Everflame. I have heard so many good things about this one and I am really, really excited about it. I actually downloaded it on my Kindle when it was on Kindle Unlimited. I'm not sure if it still is, but obviously it's been picked up by a traditional publishing house, which is very exciting for this author. And again, this is another series that I've heard incredible things about. I don't know a single thing about it. I've actually not even like read what it's about. Shall we read it now? In a mortal world colonized by the gods and ruled over by the descended, their cruel magic wielding offspring, DM Bellator yearns to escape the insular life of her poor village. When her mother suddenly disappears and DM discovers a dangerous secret about her past, she seizes an unexpected opportunity to enter the dark world of descended royalty and unlock the web of mysteries her mum left behind. With the dying king's handsome enigmatic heir watching her every move and a ruthless rebel alliance rec recruiting her to join the growing civil war, DM will have to navigate the unwritten rules of love, power and politics in order to save her family and all of mortal kind. Wow. That sounds like a lot but like in the best way possible again i'm hoping for like major escapism vibes with this i'm not sure how many books are in this series i know it's at least what like three or four maybe i am really intrigued by this and the last book in my little fantasy category i don't have the physical copy of yet but i want to continue the mistborn series by brandon sanderson i've read the first book which is the final empire and i absolutely loved it it was a bit of like a heist kind of book it kind of felt like a bit of an adult version of six of crows and i just ate it up i loved it so so much so of course I want to continue that series and so I'm hoping that I'll read the second book in that series very soon and the last category that I have in this little TBR section is other and I would say most of these are general fiction but I also have a random thriller in here as well the first one I have is the Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand like I mentioned in the recommendation section I've read one Ellen Hildebrand book which is 28 summers and I absolutely loved it and of course I want to continue reading her book so I have the Hotel Nantucket which Bestie Des sent to me a while ago and based on what I've read from the back of this it's says, while Hotel Nantucket appears to be a blissful paradise, there's a lot of drama behind closed doors. The staff and guests have complicated pasts and the hotel can't seem to overcome the bad reputation it earned in 1922 when a tragic fire killed 19-year-old chambermaid Grace Hadley. With Grace gleefully haunting the halls, wait, this is like a haunted situation. What? Okay, that's actually fascinating. I'm so intrigued by this. So it just sounds like a lot of drama, a lot of secrets, a lot of fun, but like set at like a bougie summery hotel. Can't wait. I also really want to pick up Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I'm still yet to read anything by this author and I've heard incredible things about his books. And this book just seems like the least intimidating out of all of the ones that I've seen by him. I'm just really intrigued by this. I think this is about a bunch of people who get stuck in like a hostage situation in an open home. I don't know, but I've just heard incredible things about it. And so if I just want something that isn't romance, isn't fantasy, this is definitely one I'm going to pick up. And another like general fiction, literary fiction kind of one that I want to pick up is Remarkably Bright Creatures. The cover definitely gives me summer vibes. I don't actually know what the book is about, so I can't tell you if the book is like set in the summer or gives that summery kind of feeling. But the reviews from this book are incredible. And I've heard a few people say that they have read this as a part of their book club and it has created the best discussions. And anytime someone says that about like a book club book, I want to read it immediately because all of the books that my book club has had like the best discussions from have been incredible reads and really really insightful and interesting reads and it's interesting because I saw this book months ago and I was so uninterested in it like it did not seem like something that I wanted to pick up at all but after just hearing incredible reviews I think it's won a bunch of awards as well I'm suddenly desperate to read it so hopefully I'll pick that one up over the next few months and the last book in this category as well as for this entire TBR section of this video we have Such Charming Liars by Karen M. McManus. The only reason I'm putting this in my like summer TBR is because I feel like YA thrillers and mysteries are so much better to read in the summer because they just don't require as much commitment, not a lot of thought, you know, they're just kind of more fast paced, fun reads. In this book, we are following Kat and Liam and apparently Kat's mum is a jewel thief. 
wife who's trying to steal this really expensive necklace. And then Liam's father is a serial scammer who also has his sights set on the same family that owns the necklace. So it looks like these like teenagers are going to end up maybe in like a forced proximity situation where both of their parents are involved in this thievery, I guess. I don't really know what the situation is going to be, like what the setting is, what the kind of like goal of this situation is, but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of drama, a lot of secrets, and I'm intrigued. But those are all of the books that are on my TBR for the spring slash summer months. I'm hoping I'll just be like in a really big reading mood and maybe we'll get through every single one of these. I don't know how likely that is, but we can dream. Hopefully you guys maybe picked up one recommendation or one book that you're hoping to read over the next few months as well. Let me know if you're from the Southern or Northern Hemisphere because I'm genuinely so intrigued. I feel like based on my analytics, it's like 50-50. So let me know where are you based? Where are you from? What kind of weather are you in at the moment? I am honestly fascinated. I can't believe I have besties all over the world. That is so much fun. And also feel free to let me know what's on your TBR for the next few months. But I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Goodbye.